Hi everyone, today we're going to be working again on this page from Worlds of Wonder. I'm going to just zoom you in and today my aim is to start with the tree. So let's just get it into the middle. So we've got this lovely tree. I love how um, we're using the Stedler Ergosoft pencils. I'm just trying to move them so I can reach them a little bit better. There we go. I love how Johanna seems to have adapted a new style for drawing trees for this book. And this is so pretty. I'm going to start with 56, which is quite a yellowy um, colour. And I'm going to do a light layer of this all over the whole tree. And then we're going to go over it with other greens to produce highlights and, and hopefully pretty looking effects. But the idea of this one is to keep it quite even, but don't press too hard. If you burnish this into the paper, you'll never get another layer of green to show on top. And I've learned that when I first started colouring, that if I used a light colour on a page, I couldn't get any other colour on top. And I realised eventually that it was because I was pushing too hard. And I don't really know how many layers you can get on this particular paper because this is the cover of the book. I don't know if it's the same as the paper inside so uh, I'm just being a bit careful. Also we need to be careful we don't colour on the branches because they aren't going to be green obviously. But you notice I'm doing little circular motions. I feel that if I miss out some areas of paper it will look more natural because of the sort of style of this tree. As I say, I feel like Johanna's got a new style for this book, which I rather like. I think they're rather cute and whimsical and uh, rather storybookish. It's quite uneven, not worried. Going to move on to a new colour anyway. We've got number 57. Now this is a bit darker, so I'm thinking about where are the areas that are going to be darker? Underneath, here, and here, and then at the bottom of here, we would have a dark bit. Oh, that's quite um, scruffy there. Try and blend that in a bit. Doesn't look quite so scruffy. And I'm going to sort of do these lower bits where I think it would be darker. Maybe on the edges. You can see, and I'm just going to do a few random bits as well. Because I think tree, if you look at a tree, it's not the same colour throughout. Now this looks like this bit is in front, so I'm going to do a layer of this darker pencil around the edge to sort of make it look like it would be giving a shadow. But I'm going to blend that in a bit so we don't have just a line. I'm going to do dark a bit there as well. And then darker under here. Now if your pencils are really sharp, you're going to push and burnish into the page more. So use them on the side a little bit, more like this sort of movement. Um, I can't hold my pencil like that very well and staying and being short is the angle I'm using. But um, and then don't go straight down like this because that's going to really push pencil into the page, which can be great if you want a really dark little area but for this we don't. So there's another bit, another green. And our last colour, I think, hmm, I'm gonna go with this one, number 52. Now it's quite a bit darker, so I'm gonna try and keep it on its side and use it quite gently and just emphasise some of these darker areas wherever I think it will be dark and then just do a little general bits and bobs across just to add a different tone into the tree and I'm trying to do it in little circular motions to make it look more natural and maybe under here would be a little bit darker now remember if it looks a bit messy you can go over and over you don't have to just use the one layer Oh, I managed to go onto the branch, never mind. Now under this tree, I'm thinking I'm a little unsure because I was going to do 
a background colour around the edge, the whole edge of each of these. But this has got goes all the way down to the bottom, as do a few of the designs. Whereas some of them, like this butterfly, you can see the bottom here, it doesn't. So it's a little bit, I'm a little bit unsure of what to do. <laughs> I've got bits there. You're probably trying to brush them off your uh, off your phone. It's me. Now I've got these bits hanging down and I've got the grassy bits and this little bit. I'm not going to introduce any new greens. I'm going to use this one for this, I've decided. And then this grass under here would sort of be that colour. So I'm just going to do a little bit. Because it's drawn in, I've got to colour it. So I'm going to take it right down, I think. I may end up looking at what other people have done. This design. Okay. The bits hanging from the tree, I'm going to do in number 57. You could really pick any of the colours from the tree. But this one, a little bit darker, I thought would stand out a little bit more. And we've got quite a yellow bias on the tree from the first colour that we did, so I thought this might work better. Now the tree trunk, we've got quite a few browns in the Ergo Softs, but I'm going to go for a darker brown. I might put one of the more orangey browns on top after 76, and uh, but I'm just going to see how it looks. I'm just going to rub that bit of green out. I've got my Tombow Mono eraser. Which is quite fine. I can just rub it out a little bit, it doesn't want to come off. I'm just going to have to colour over it and hope that it works. That seems okay, thankfully. Now I'm doing, I'm just going to do a layer across everywhere and then I will give some thought to um, where I'm going to shade it. Sometimes I do the shading first, sometimes I don't. It all depends on the item really and sort of whether it's obvious or not. Now I'm thinking under here it's going to be quite dark. We've got the leaves that are going to be shadowing it and the same up here and on all of these um, branches. So cute aren't they? And then in here, look, where this overlaps, it's going to be a bit darker. I'm going to darken that whole edge and this whole edge. And I find if I darken the edges, it somehow gives it a more three-dimensional appearance because it looks like there's light in the middle. So we'll do the same on this side. So just a hard, hard line down here and here. And then we'll just bring it in a little bit to make it look less harsh, which I'm going to do with this main trunk as well. And I realise we've missed out a bit of a bit of greenery, so just gently bring that colour in a little bit. We can even do some marking here, we can just go over here a bit, make it a bit darker here if we want to, so it looks like the tree's dipped in. That's quite fun. Um, I'm going to do this little bit here. It's very hard for you guys to see in the very light number 56. I don't know if you can see. I've even done anything to that, but you can believe me, I did. So I could go over the tree now. I can notice I've missed a bit here, which is still white, um, in, a, in a more orangey yellow, um, orangey brownie colour from the yoga soft, but I'm actually just going to leave it as it is. I'm quite happy with that, just being quite plain. So I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to pause the video for a minute while I write down the colours I used, and then we're going to do another one. Hi, right, I've written down those colours so that when I re repeat that um, tree picture elsewhere on the page, I know what to do without having to re-watch my own video. I find that very distressing. Um, and we're going to do this um, tent. Now I have done one already um, in a video, um, which was um, this one 
but uh, I thought we could do this one slightly differently and uh, and give you a different idea as to what to do. I've still got to put red in it. Sorry, but red is the way to start. But instead of doing red and white, we might do red and blue, just for a different effect. So 29 is our red. Yes, as I was saying, I find it very distressing <laughs> re-listening to my um, my videos. I don't know. It's uh, I, I guess it's like if you watch yourself back on a TV show or something. Some people can do it and some people just can't. So uh, I'm going to do a darker bit towards the bottom then lighten it up towards the middle and do the same on this stripe from the top to the middle like that okay and we're going to do the same on every red stripe now what I'm going to do is because some of these stripes have dots on I'm going to use that as a guide and I'm going to do all of the dotty ones red so uh, just because I think that's what Johanna wants us to do I don't know well, not necessarily red, but I think she wants to do those the same. Yes, it's quite difficult when I'm editing my videos. I don't like listening to the sound. So uh, hopefully they're okay because I don't listen to them. I just um, look at the pictures and make sure it looks okay. And uh, that's that really. Oh, just heard a train. Don't know if you can hear it. It's always different sounds when I'm recording here. I think you can hear the trains throughout the house. I always hear the one about, not always, but if I'm late going to bed, I hear the 11 o'clock and it rattles um, my bedroom wall and it goes by. There's um, there's a television on the wall which isn't, it's firm enough, but it seems to rattle. I think it's because it's on a bracket, there, it rattles on the bracket a little bit. Okay, now with the curtains, it's a little confusing because we've got two and then three here. So I think what I'm, hmm, I'm gonna leave the other one, I'm gonna do a little bit here in red and add in a stripe, do you see? It's a bit naughty of me, I'm just sort of slightly adapting the picture as I think it's gonna look a little odd just because of the way I'm imagining it. Now I haven't done any shading on that, I've just done it all the same because it's quite a thin area. But on this one we will. You see we've got um, lines coming down from the top here that Johanna's drawn for us, so to me that indicates there's a bit more darkness there. I think I'm gonna leave it paler at the bottom. As I think at the on the bottom of the tent it looks like it's darker because it's near the ground here I think I'm just going to leave it paler it's just because of the way Johanna's put those lines in indicates to me that she thinks it's darker at the top than the bottom and she knows can you see you can see so it's the same technique with all of the stripes I've never coloured them um, tents before it's so fun Now I don't have a gel pen with me and we've got dots in here so that's, I've got to think about what I'm doing with that. So let's put the red down. I'm going to grab my blue. Now there's quite a few nice darkish blues in the Erga Soft. Um, I'm going to go for the number three. So I'm going to follow the pattern that I have already. So with this one we're going to do a darker and then lighter. Gosh I'm getting really cold in this kit. It's cold down here. And then go grab a jumper between the videos in a minute. And darker at the bottom. And just try and fade it down so that you don't have a stripe. I'm just going to ignore that bit in the middle and do this side. Ooh, I've gone over that bit. Oh well, that is okay. Let's not worry about it. I can use a rubber if we need to. I haven't decided what colour that's going to be anyway. Okay, so that's fading down like that. There we go. And now I am going to do this. Because I didn't do any shading, really, actually, it's quite easy. i just got to block it in, really. Not make it too dark, not too light. I've never been 
to a circus. I think I said that last time I did a tent. So I don't really know what they would look like. Of course I've got an idea in my head because uh, we all do. My parents went to a circus and they didn't like it. So they just never took me. And uh, we have one near here, but it's so expensive. Um, it's a really sort of posh one and it looks amazing but um, I just it's so expensive for all the family to go I probably should have gone before I had the children <laughs> it would have been cheaper it's always cheaper without children isn't it I'll wait till they leave home and then I'll go without them but uh, it's always um, a lot of people I know go every time they're on and love it so uh, it's something I should really do. Yeah, my mum doesn't like clowns. This circus bias doesn't have them. And um, she um, also didn't like the smell of the animals. Um, this is number eight grey, which I'm going to use for these lines. I'm going to put it darker at each end and fade it towards the centre and try if I can to leave a small white gap so it almost looks like it's metal so it's like a pole a metal pole of some sort so it's sort of the part of the structure holding up the tent I don't know if it would be as I say I haven't been I don't know much about tents I've never been camping I don't know anything about this sort of thing there we go I think that's okay and these little um, tie bags I'm also going to do this colour but I'm going to do them quite solid because they're not metal but I thought if I chose either red or blue it might look a little bit odd so I chose that colour. Now we have this sort of welcome mat which I think is lovely and uh, I'm going to do some browns for that. I'm going to do a lighter colour though, start with number 49 I'm just going to go all over the mat in this colour and what I will then do is add another colour to shade it and then maybe try and put a sort of pattern because we've got this pattern drawn on it so I know I haven't done the inside of the tent I'm still thinking okay so going in with number 73 now I'm thinking it might be a bit darker here and here but actually this front would it be darker than the top Possibly. I think I'm just going to do a bit of shade on the sort of edges a bit just to make it look less flat and more interesting like that just a bit just just faffing about really now the pattern mm, I'm going to grab yes that's what I'm going to do a number 76 and I'm going to do a sort of slightly stripy pattern on every other one just a little bit trying to line it up so they're not next to each other yeah I think that works okay it's quite now the center hmm still thinking I've got those dots do about those. Hmm. I know. Right. Number 10. Lemon yellow. Dots. Lots of dots. Press hard. Burnish them in. You don't have to go with the top of the black dots that are there. Do your own dots anywhere you wish. It's probably better if you don't go over the black because they'll stand out more. I'm just randomly splodging about. Now hopefully if you press hard enough these will burnish into the paper and when you cover it with another colour which we are going to do they will show up if it doesn't work well we can use a gel pen but it's been an interesting experiment so what colour inside do you want it to be dark or light hmm. I think dark and I think Let's pick up this grey that we've been using, this dark grey. I'm just going to go for it, not very daring, and see whether this works. 
it may be a total disaster. No, it's working. Now you notice how gently I'm doing it to start with. And this is like when you do, as a child, wax crayons and um, you paint on top. You push the wax crayon down onto the paper and it leaves a mark and then it resists the paint. That's exactly what this is doing, it's resisting the pencil. Now I'm going to put some more dark into the middle here. So you can see we have these little dots. There we go. I'm not going to go any darker than that. I'm happy with that. I think if I keep pushing, I will eventually cover the yellow. So I need to be a little bit careful. And, uh, and I don't want it to look dark and scary. So I think just looking a little bit dark in yellow looks inviting, hopefully. So there's that. So we've done our tree and our tent. I will just zoom out a little bit so you can have a note in, out. I oh, sound like I was doing the hokey cokey then, didn't I? In, out. There we go. So now you can see them both. So we've got the um, tree and the tent. So I hope you enjoyed those. Um, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.